Hi all, this is Alan with Bothell STEM Coach, and today we are looking at some more uh, AP Physics uh, free response questions, and um, we are doing some more harmonic motion. Now as usual, uh, th this is a big problem, but um, I tried to fit everything together, but I do suggest you attempt to um, pause the video, attempt to do the problem as it is right now, and then come back after you've attempted the problem. Um, so let's get started. You are conducting an experiment to measure the acceleration due to gravity g u at an unknown location. In the measurement apparatus, a simple pendulum swings past the photo gate located at the pendulum's lowest point, which records the time t10 for the pendulum to undergo 10 full oscillations. The pendulum consists of a sphere and mass m at the end of the string has length l. There are four versions of this apparatus, each with different length. All four are at unknown location, and the data below shows that are sent to you during the experiment. Do, do, do. Okay. For each pendulum, calculate the period t and the square of the period. Use a reasonable number of significant figures and enter these results in the table above. So t10 goes 10 full oscillations. So that means 1, 2, 3. So I think it's just 1 tenth of this would be um, the period because this is really 10 of them. So 0.762. Uh, 0.889. I just divide by 10. Um, on oh, in the square of the period. Um, let's go ahead and fill out the square of the period. Anyway, calculator over here. Point five eight. When they say reasonable number of significant, because this is three, I should just round to three digits. It's really hard to plot more than three digits anyway, so on paper, so it doesn't really matter if I add accuracy that much. One point zero one eight. Uh that's this is four significant figures, so I'm gonna do four. One point four five nine. Again more doing more do like three decimal places. And I should leave all three decimal places because that's what the accuracy of this was, if you care. Okay, uh, so that's fine. Uh, next up, we'll plot the square of the period versus length of the pendulum and draw a best fit straight line for the data. So it's always useful to know where they're going with this. And why the square of the period? Um, the equation that governs this is 2 pi square root um, L over G. So when they're doing two squared, it's this is really four pi squared, square um, just L over G. So uh, depending on what you're trying to do, um, this is if this is my independent variable y and L, four pi squared over G would be the slope of the line. That's why that's why they're making this linear. It's a linear relationship between T squared and L, because four pi squared over G is presumably a constant. Um, so that's kind of where they're going to go with this, but let's let's plot this. So, 12 centimeters, 10, 11, 12. I'm at 0 0.581. So 0.5678910. Yeah, this is five. Oh, sorry. sorry, let's do this again. Uh, 10, 11, 12, and I go up to 0 0.5, 0 0.6, but it's 0 0.58. So we'll put it about there. Okay. 0.889, uh, sorry, sorry, 18, 15, 16, 17, 18. So I'm here, and then I go up to 0.79. That's almost 0.8. So 5, 6, 7, 8. We'll put it like right underneath, just a smidge underneath it there. And then 21 is here. Uh, 21, the centimeters, right there. And then height is 1.018. So 1 is about there. 1. Point z this is 1.1, 1. 1. 1. 1.01 1 is barely above 1, so we'll just call it right about there. Probably not even that high. I should have just put it right on the dot. And then uh, at 32, 30, 31, 32, it's 1.459, 1. 1.459, about halfway there. 
So draw like that. I'm going to switch to my attempted ruler thing here and try to fit it. I don't know. It's not a good. Uh, we'll, we'll call that a fit. I, I, I don't know. Like, I hate eyeballing these squares fit. I, they don't have you do it too much anymore, but it's kind of annoying. Um, so let's pick two points and, uh, well, I'm, I'm jumping ahead. What do they want you? So I, I, that's what I did. I, 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 I've completed this. I plotted it and I drew a, a best fit line. Assuming that each pendulum undergoes small amplitude oscillations from your fit, determine the experimental value of G X or the acceleration to gravity unknown location, justify your answer. So first we're going to calculate the slope. What's the slope equal to? And it, from this equation, I know the slope ought to be four pi squared over G. Okay. So I want to attempt to figure out the slope, and I'm going to just do that. Honestly, you could just take any two points and take the difference. I mean, I made it a little flatter, but we'll just pick something. We'll pick this point and just somewhere that it's like crossing a point that I can draw. And, and you try to put the points far apart, and it like helps your accuracy a little bit. We'll do those two points. So we'll say my two points are um, there and there. So I want to do the change in y over the change in x. The y goes up uh, 1, 2, 3, 4, 5. So that's uh, 5 seconds squared um, divided by the change in x. One, let's see, this is uh, 15, 16, 17. And this is uh, 29, 29 minus 17. But you see, these are in centimeters. And I typically want to do this equation all in uh, meters. So I'm going to say um, divided by 100.29 meters minus 0.17 meters. So you do have to check the units. Um, otherwise, it won't be in seconds, um, whatever your cap or seconds squared, I guess. Um, so 5 divided by 0.29 minus 0.17. And this is 41.667 uh, uh, seconds squared per meter. So then I want to solve for g. I, I bring the g up and I bring everything down. So g is equal to 4 pi squared divided by 41.667 seconds squared per meter. Okay. 4 pi divided by that. I got, oh my gosh, did I mess something up? Um, oh, times pi squared, times another pi. Oh, uh, it's pi squared. Okay, geez, 0.947 uh, meters per second squared. This is not right, obviously. It should be... Let's see what I did wrong here. Um, second squared. Why is it so far off? Then 4 pi squared divided by that. centimeters divide by a hundred. Oh, haha. <laughs> I have my conversion. It should be 2.9 and 1.7. My bad. So this should have been 4.1667. That makes more sense. I can't convert meter, uh, centimeters and meters for some reason. Okay, so I got G is 9.47. Uh, meters per second squared. Okay, that's close. Actual answer is 9.8, right? About. So, you yeah, know, that's, that's pretty good. Okay, so let's scroll down so it's a little bit easier to read. Um, if the measurement apparatus allows a determination of GMU that is accuracy within 4%, is your experimental value in agreement with 0.98 meters per second squared? Um, justify your answer. Well, let's find the percent error of 9.47. Minus 9.8 meters per second squared divided by 9.8 meters per second squared. Let's see what the percent difference is. Um, that is minus 3.3 uh, percent. So yeah, it's within it's within 4 percent of the actual value. So yeah, it, it matches. If I had a number bigger than 4 percent, basically I would be like further away than what I was measuring. So either. I think gravity is wrong, or my apparatus wouldn't 
wasn't really within 4% or, or I messed up and recorded the data wrong. Okay, someone from you, someone informs you from the experiment is in fact near the Earth's surface, but that the experiment has been conducted inside an elevator with a constant acceleration a. If the elevator is moving down, determine the direction of the elevator's acceleration. Justify your uh, answer. This wasn't really much of a harmonic motion other than just using the period equation, but that's fine. Um, if the elevator is moving down, determine the uh, so say so. We're basically saying. Um, um, I don't know if it makes sense to you. It's just the difference between these two accelerations. And let's kind of draw a picture. Um, I have some apparatus. It's moving down at A. Uh, it's moving with a constant acceleration A. It's moving down. What that does is um, it affects the effective G that we saw. Um, it's downward. Because, so the way you want to think about it is the way gr the way gravity feels on you is that if I draw a free body diagram of ac everything acting on the apparatus, right? So I have a I have a little pendulum here. Or let's just look at the elevator. Uh, I have mg acting down on me, and if the elevator wasn't accelerating, like um, that, uh, I have the normal force too from the elevator pushing back. And these are normally equal to each other uh, with no acceleration because the net force would have to equal zero. But uh, as I accelerate downward, mg has to be bigger than fn. So fn, um, we would do mg minus fn is equal to ma. Because if we say this is the positive direction, um, my, my normal force is mg minus ma. Okay. And, and this G minus A is sort of the effective gravitational force that you feel. Okay, so that's why it's downward. It's because I, I'm, I'm really detecting lower gravity, right? So um, when I'm going upward, the, the, the ground pushing against me makes me feel like the ground is pushing more on me, which means I, mean, I feel like I have more gravity. Um, whereas when I go downward, I feel like there's no gravity because uh, it's not pushing on me as much. So, um, okay. So hope you found that helpful. I'll see you on the next video. Thanks for watching the video guys. Please leave a comment, like, or subscribe below to catch up more of the content and see any links below. I offer free homework help on uh, Twitch and Discord. See you guys in the next video.